Well, hello, my name's Louise Savage. Um, if we've not met before, welcome. And if we have, um, welcome back to my channel, Louise Savage Muses. Um, it's my June wrap up today. Um, and bizarrely, I'm in my pyjamas because I've not been feeling brilliant this afternoon. Um, so, you know, when you just need to go, <laughs> just need to sort of feel comfy and snuggle up and what have you. So um, I thought, what could I do? I'll, I'll sit and chat to these lovely people um, about what I've been reading. Now, strangely, I'm only going to talk about four books. I have read others this month, but I'm saving those for a, a, a different um, video that I want to make about a, a different topic, and I don't really want to repeat myself. Um, however, it has been a cracking reading month. Um, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So the first novel that I'm going to talk about, this is a proof copy, so it won't look like the one that you see on the bookshelves but you can hopefully see that on this proof copy it's got this fantastic um picture of a whale and um i've been hearing an awful lot about this novel um it's called the stranding and it's written by kate sawyer and i'm pretty sure could be wrong i think it's her debut novel um i absolutely if you want a really really engrossing read um that you can't put down this is definitely the one um for june anyway um i loved it so it it starts on a beach which turns out to be in new zealand um and there's a a woman who sort of stumbles onto the beach she's been running and she's got a backpack on and she's really hot and clearly thirsty but there's also a dead whale on this beach or at least, no, it's not dead, it's dying. Um, and so she immediately starts to try and give it water, you know, lubricate its eyes, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, and she's also being watched. And we kind of see her as well from the viewpoint, the perspective of this man who's watching her, who clearly thinks she's completely wasting her time and, you know, why is she bothering? Um, and eventually she gets really frustrated and asks him to come and help, which he sort of reluctantly does. Um, but you also realise that something really strange is happening to the colour of the sky. Um, the conversation is a little bit stilted and odd. And you feel like there's a piece of information that's kind of missing. And that is that the world has completely and dramatically changed. There's been some sort of, um, we guess, nuclear explosion. And... Um, they can see this sort of cloud coming towards them or the, the, this red sky. And um, as a last resort, she decides that it would be very sensible to get inside the whale, which they do. Now, the description of that is phenomenal. It's worth reading for that alone. Um, the way that, that, you know, the smells, the, 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 the textures, it's a really, really sensory description inside that whale um, and then the novel proceeds from there. Now it also takes place over two sort of time zones if you like. So um, Ruth, the main character, is um, British, English. She, um, we, we hear her backstory as it were. There were moments where um, I think, I think for me, the, my only sort of criticism of this would be that that the New Zealand story was so powerful. Um, the story in England, sometimes I just didn't want to be back in it. Um, but I completely understand why it needed to be there for the for the arc of the novel. Um, but I loved this. I thought it was wonderful. Very, very well written. Um, lovely pace to it. Um, if you're a fan of dystopia, I think you'll like it. If you're not, don't let that put you off because um, it's just very striking and what an amazing idea as well you know really really creative anyway there we go that was my first um read of june and then um on one of my recent trips to london with with simon um of savage reads fame my son um i picked up this lovely book i mean it, it, you can see why i spotted it on the shelf i mean i love a bit of turquoise and then you've got this fantastic um feathered wing here i don't know what other sort of wing oh well butterflies aren't feathered are they 
um, and it's called My Pen is the Wing of a Bird and it's actually a, a collection, an anthology of um, short stories written by Afghan women and it was only published very recently um, and I suppose what's really upsetting about it is the, the, the fact that, you know, how how will it be possible to produce this kind of thing at the moment under under the current um, Afghan regime? Um, and every single woman who writes in here is creative, is thoughtful. You get a really strong sense of the things that matter to them. Um, and, and obviously, you know, the way that they are so at the whim of the male relatives that they they live with and there are some very sort of common threads that that weave through these stories um you know fear abuse it's not an easy read but what's so impressive is the resilience of these voices and they certainly need to be heard so i really really recommend it to you um i think it was written by some sort of collective um i oh know i did read it i did read the blurb uh it's through yeah through untold it's a it's a, a it's a, a group called untold um and what they do is they support people in various parts of the world to to be able to tell their story so the whole idea of it is to bring voices um to our attention that that um we may not have heard of there's a really good introduction here as well by Lise Doucette who's um one of the BBC's um, foreign correspondents is very thoughtful, insightful introduction too, um, which I also really appreciated. Um, so yeah, if you want to find out more about um, those lives, one of the things that really fascinated me was was um, going into Afghan houses, as it were, um, being kind of invited in by these women and the, the, the whole sort of... Um, rituals around the kitchen and cooking and and so on um and care of children and um also things like you know multiple um marriages um so yeah it was it was really really interesting there you go and then i, I don't know how this had passed me by but i didn't realize that the actor david thewlis is also a writer this is his second novel shooting martha sorry it's a bit um it's glistening a bit on the screen um, and I picked this up again quite recently in London because I just loved the image on the front that was what drew my attention and I thought gosh that looks like a summer read the title suggested it might be some sort of thriller I was completely absorbed by this novel I can't lie um, David Thewlis is Professor Lupin in Harry Potter for those of you who perhaps um, can't put a face to the name uh, very very highly regarded um, a British actor and um, this novel is set within the world of film uh, which obviously is a world that he knows really well and I was racking my brains and I honestly don't think that I've read a novel that's set in in the world of film before so it, it intrigued me for that reason alone but it's just it's really quirky um, I found it for me personally I just could not put it down all I wanted to do was sit and read this um, the premise is that it's a, um, a, an actor um, who has had a, a really quite um, traumatic past and he's created this film which, which they're filming. Um, he's got a very interesting relationship with the female director of the film and they're filming it in his father's, in his parents' house, the house I think he grew up in. Well, yes, it was the house he grew up in. And... Um, his father committed suicide, so they're trying to reenact that whole um, suicide of his father. But also there's this kind of uh, pretty horrendous story surrounding his mother as well. Um, so that's that's part of the narrative. And I just found it. It's really compelling and it's really graphic and unpleasant in places. So it makes you sort of go Ooh, quite a lot. But also it's very funny. You know, at times I found I was I was laughing out loud um, with with the humour in the novel. It's really dark. Um, and then also this actor's wife has died fairly recently. And he 
meets um, or sees this young actress, Betty, who um, who looks just like her. And this idea springs in his head. So he basically employs Betty, sends her out to France to the house where he and his wife lived and um, video calls her. Um, she can't see him, but he can see her. And before he starts the calls, um, he spends, he pays her to train to pick up Martha. Martha was his wife. Pick up Martha's accent, uh, impersonate Martha. Um, so that, you know, he he behaves as though Martha is still alive and he's contacting her. And, and, and Betty's story, the actress who's playing Martha, also becomes really complicated and creepy so um i i recommend this really highly and I, I don't know how it passed me by i did out of interest um have a look at the reviews and they were very mixed not particularly positive but i i beg to differ i i really think this is a cracking summer read there we go shooting martha david thewlis um and finally it's just a quick one today um, I read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, Acevedo, Acevedo. I'm really sorry, Elizabeth. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Um, oh, my goodness. Again, I read this. I couldn't put it down. Um, it's another novel in verse, which I'm becoming increasingly a fan of. It's a YA novel. Um, but what does that even mean? Um, I... I loved it. It's it's really unusual in that um, it tells the story of a young um, uh, American girl living in New York um, in, you know, quite straightened circumstances. She lives with her, her parents and her brother. She's very close to her brother. She, they're twins. They share a room. She's a teenager. She's exploring the world. And um, the thing that, that struck me as being unusual for a contemporary novel was that there's an awful lot about religion in this in this book. Um, she has a very, very um, staunchly Catholic mother who insists that they go to church and she's in the process of um, taking communion. Um, her brother has bought her this, this um, notebook um, which is very precious to her and she writes in her notebook and she writes poetry, uh, hence the title. Um, and she also has a teacher who really tries to encourage her to go to these poetry slams, but she knows her parents won't approve. There's a shadow over her, her the relationship between her mother and father as well. That's quite awkward and difficult. So the scenes in the household are really tense and... and um, uh, beautifully sort of managed, I think. The tone of the novel is really interesting. Um, she has a really close friend, she and her twin. Um, the close friend is is a friend through the church and um, they only really socialise the three of them together ever. Um, and then she brushes arms with um, a young boy in a biology lesson, I think it is, and um, things take a, a turn. So, um, again, I highly commend this. It won all sorts of awards. Uh, it won the National Book Award in 2018. Can't believe I only just got around to reading it. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed this. So there you go. Very brief little flick through my um, June reads today. Um, really hope uh, you enjoyed that. Hope that your, your June reading has been equally joyful. Um, and, uh, and please, you know, keep watching and I look forward to, um, seeing you probably this time next week. I hope. There we go. Take care. Bye.